triumph because good is done. Hello, what have we here? To nothing but tour, the official podcast of Nothing Gaming. Home, your host, Hawk, and welcome to episode 36 of Nothing But Tour. If you're new to the show, you can check us out at www.nothinggaming.com. Follow us at Twitter at Nothing Gaming. Email us at nothinggaming at nothinggaming.com. Listen to us at Bootleg Radio Station from 7.30 to 9 p.m. Eastern every Tuesday. And of course, you can also check us out at TGN.TV. So it's uh, been an interesting week for us. We had a couple weeks now with 1.2 coming out. So let's go ahead and uh, round the room so we can give you our impressions of the newest raid. With me, as always, is Duxon. Yo. And of course, Blake, nobody has one, Dupree. Hi. And Cloud. What's up? We, uh, of course, do not have Keith for this night as she is Yay. moving. So it's a, it's a boys' night tonight. Yay. Yay. I'm, a, I'm a goddamn man. What the hell you mean, boy? <laughs> what the fuck's wrong with you? Ducks, I pe- don't lie. I don't pee stand- I pee standing up, bitch. You're a boy. No, you don't. It's okay. Wait, so all boys pee sitting down? I don't know. <laughs> I, I never really took the time to look, nor do I want to. Is that how they do it in Korea? Uh, well, I don't, I don't believe so. Oh, wow. What awkward conversations there. But, yeah, um, I know, it's serene. <laughs> <laughs> but, of course, we, um, Interesting week. So, uh, what have you guys been up to this week? I'm going to uh, start with you, Ducks. What have you been up to? Oh, uh, I'm suffering from a hangover. I had a bachelor party last night, Saturday night, and I'm I'm still hurting. I'm I'm sore. It was uh, quite the adventure for my future brother-in-law. Oh, so for the, not your. I thought it was your brother. No, it was your brother-in-law. No, no. Yeah, this is. Uh, no, I only have uh, a sister, and she's getting married in a couple weeks, and. We had the bachelor party, and the, the thing that was really weird is that every single one of them was, like, an electronical engineer. Oh, and, so a bunch of nerds. Yeah, but it was really, like, they were talking about, like, all different, like, coding and stuff like that, and I'm sitting here, like, That wow. sounds like an absolute blast of a bachelor party. You know what? Did he, like, they were nerds, and I'm just sitting here like, wow, I work for Coca-Cola. I'm, I they, Like, seriously, the amount I make in a year, they make that in a month. Because you're, like, you're, like, the, the typical blue-collar like worker guy like that's what I imagine basically in a room full of like yeah these guys nerd, all, nerd factory yeah, nerd they, people you know like, they had the, the sweater vest or whatever yeah. I'm sitting here wearing basketball shorts and a t-shirt really showing my <laughs> Detroit pride and uh and oh, it, it, then I realized that these nerds can fucking drink holy <laughs> shit these guys know actually how to party and and it just yeah it, it was quite an amazing night it's always gonna be awkward when it's a brother-in-law party because, like, if he goes too too far during the bachelor's party, it's oh, like I, that's I his, sure to keep that's his, his future check. wife's brother that's yes. right there next to it. So it's like yes. that's an entire awkward situation right there. You can't get away with much. Well, what was funny <laughs> is the last bar we went to, like, we were there for like two hours. This bachelorette party showed up, and all there like there was eleven of us and. How migrated parties to where it was a bachelorette and a bachelor party. Well, I pretty much had my future brother in law on lockdown. I was like, if you look at anybody, I will snap your goddamn neck. <laughs> Way to ruin his entire party. Yeah. <laughs> All right. How about you, Blake? What have you been up to? Pass. Pass? No, you can't pass. Pass. 
No, no, no. Fine, I'll, I'll give you the same answer I give every week. Well, Nothing. I know you've been playing Guild Wars 2 for a little bit. And it's this, not this good. Weekend. And yeah, yeah, you weren't too... Uh, no, I... I you weren't too excited about beta. it. It wasn't good then, it's not good now. Yeah, so it's not really your, your thing. And then, then... Nope. I know you and Cloud are super excited about your Diablo 2, like, old school <sighs> get-together. Yeah, like, really? Up. You're gonna bring that up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fine. You're, you're, okay, gonna, so, you're gonna old school nerd it out. Yeah, me, Cloud, and a couple other people we know gonna uh, bring out the uh, the random number generator and <laughs> random us some, <laughs> you know, we're gonna random some hardcore D2 characters. Random class and random talent spec. Pretty fun. That That's a whole new level of nerd right there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, it's gonna be more fun than Guild Wars 2. Oh, burn. Alright, how about yeah. you, Cloud? Like, I know you had a different opinion of Guild Wars 2, though. Oh, I like it. See, yeah, you're definitely the minority. Like, I played it, and I didn't really care for it, and I know Blake didn't, but you're definitely... I don't know, like, what did you like about it? It's because he's a cheap ass, he doesn't want to spend money. <laughs> <laughs> it's a free game. Uh, I don't know, I just, I thought it was pretty interesting. Uh, I like how the whole... Like, a bunch of different abilities works. A uh, bunch of the different abilities works. That's you know, like well, well, that, how, that's like the most horrible description well, how, ever. Like, you know, different weapons change the skills you get, and then other skills will change, or depending on the class, like like you swap weapons around and you do different mm -hmm. abilities because of that. Okay, I guess because I that. think it, it it definitely like it's a lot more complicated. It'll like reward those who can kind of multitask and always keep things in mind. As opposed to like, on what they need to like be doing. Well, that's why I, I he likes it. I get to what you're saying. There. That's why well, he likes it because Gamer Cloud. He likes he you know he'd like a challenge. Yeah, and that's yeah. That sounds like a that sounds like your game, Cloud. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. <laughs> Especially because they tried like an elemental uh, elementalist and uh, like they have like, was it fire, water, earth, and electricity? I think. Are you making you Captain, Captain America? Planet. Captain, Planet. Captain Planet. <laughs> Oh, well, they had, that. So they had the those, final talent is heart, but yeah. And then like they have like different weapon types, and then so for like daggers, like dagger fire is different from dagger uh, electricity, dagger water, and so there's just like a huge number of combinations, and you can definitely you know. So you like it because it's kind of like um, it's not like your your typical MMO where it's like you have these set abilities and stuff like that. It continually rotates between what weapon sets you're using and kind of stuff like that. I get I get. Uh -huh. what, what are you saying there? I still just don't really care for the game, but it's not because of the combat stuff. The combat stuff's fine. This is for other reasons. But um, yeah, I've had an interesting week where I've been pretty much laid up all week long with the uh, since I injured my back. So I've pretty much been, I guess, high like all week. As they keep giving me like codeine and other drugs. So whatever. At least I did get to miss a few days of work. So I'm 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 fairly happy with that. But um, going on to tour news now, uh, we definitely had a couple of interesting things, interesting things this week. Uh, go ahead and buzz real past the uh, with the dev tracker stuff. Uh, what what kind of happened this week there, Duxin? Oh, you caught me off guard, you dirty bastard. Uh, well, I know the uh, APAC character transfers um, completed. Uh, something about placeholder characters, um, I guess, is the remaining issue. Um, stuff like that. I mean, really, that was really about it. So basically, yeah. what they um, what were we with the 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 place? I know because there was there were some issues at first, where and for people who don't know, they actually opened up the Asian Pacific servers, mm -hmm. and then they allowed because right now a lot of the Aussie players and stuff like that were playing on the um, the American servers. And I know they finally opened theirs up and they're actually going to release them to let them just transfer over to the uh, the Aussie ones. But uh, there's a whole thing with like transferring legacy over correctly. I think there's a lot, a lot of like weird things. Cause it's not like in WoW when they first opened the transfer. So like, there's like there's more things that interconnect your single character with all the rest of your characters in tour than say like what WoW did. Mm -hmm. So I mean like there's, there's a lot of little things that they transfer over. Like, um, I know we're talking to one of our friends. He's actually got transferred over. Like, he didn't transfer over his highest level character. He transferred over one of his other ones, but the one that got the ones that got transferred over 
still had the same legacy level as his highest level character that was still on the North American servers. Yes. So like really it benefited him. Yeah, and that would uh, that obviously would be the one thing I would probably rage the most. Like if I were to transfer my guy and I would lose all my legacy, I probably would just quit the game. <laughs> I mean, as dumb <laughs> as it sounds, but it's like, dude, I'm so high in legacy, I just really don't want to do that shit over again. I would just yeah. go nuts. See, for me, I'd be more pissed about losing my legacy name. And like, that really like, isn't a big issue for me. Like the legacy name and stuff like that, that, that would bother me. Like, and like, I hate the idea. And then, of course, we've talked about it before. Like, if they ever do server mergers or something like that, like, I'd be really iffy about losing my character's name. Like, because you know that that's me. Like, my character is is the Haka. So it's like, I, I don't like the idea of going to another server and I gotta like you know make a different name and all stuff like that. I'm like, oh no, because some right. dick bag's gonna have the same name and he's gonna be awful. Yeah, and then, um, so going from that, there also was another question um, somebody asked about getting the 30-day credit um, and yet not get the Tauntaun pen. Well, Allison Berryman came out, and you can receive one before the other. Um, apparently, this sh- should, as of the 25th, I believe, you should be receiving both Central Standard Time. Um, but it is, it, is impos- it is possible to receive one before the other. But if you haven't got anything now, uh, you may want to call customer service about that and figure out where, you, where your shit is. Hey, it's super important to get that, that Tauntaun pet. <laughs> <laughs> That's life or death. I need to have that Tauntaun pet. Yeah. And then, of course, another, um, economy well, kind of, exploit. Kind of robot. Pretty bad right there. All right. And then there was also um, another, like, I guess, another economy exploit. Um, where if you were from what I, my understanding, I think it was, um, if you send something in a mail to someone, you log off quick enough and come back on the items will send and they will still be there. So you're pretty much duplicating the item. Um, I know that's, uh, they're, they're cracking down on that pretty fucking heavy right now. That's a uh, that's a pretty sweet X. I, right I seriously wish I was the guy that found this shit. Just like just out of nowhere, yeah, I would I know, do right? something completely random, and it's like, oh, I just ended up with twenty million credits. All right. I know. Like I'm I'm never the person to figure out those kind of bugs. Yeah. The ones where I can actually like use it, make lots of credits in the game. And I'm wondering, like, if you sent money, that would happen. If uh, well, that I think the money they actually have that would be easier to find because apparently the money is like they track everything you do and if all of a sudden like you receive x amount of credits they're going to be like oh well that's suspicious items i think it might be a little bit more difficult maybe i have no idea yeah maybe i don't know but like you could have just kept sending money to like your alts and just like logging (laughs) out and like your money's back there and you you keep doing over and over again yeah, like they probably would have figured something out with that, though. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But um, moving on, though, we did have an actual Q&A this week, though. And um, some kind of interesting stuff come up. I mean, obviously, the big thing that was happening last week and kind of continued through some of this week was we had the, the world event was the uh, the Rat Ghoul Plague event, which um, I'm sure by now many of you are very, very tired of just randomly blowing up on the uh, whatever fleet you're on. But um, kind of an interesting event. It, it reminded me a lot of some of the old school WoW world events where it's the, um, I know Cloud will kind of remember this stuff, but uh, with when Nax originally came out, they had the, the whole undead zombie event kind of thing. Oh, you that was a go, great one. And you needed to go and like, Go where all the little crystals are, and they were forming all the little zombies and stuff, and kill them. And like you could eventually use the stuff from that to buy some special items and stuff like that. So I mean, it um kind of remind me a little bit of that. It's a, a little fun. Like obviously, through the whole quest chain, you ended up going to Tatooine where the spaceship crashed, and there's like you know half rat ghoul zombie people. I'm just gonna call them space zombies, but um they're out you know everywhere. But of course, they also had the uh, ultimately the entire time you saved up the little grackle plague thing so you can buy special items like the the black and green crystals and stuff like that so it it was kind of an interesting thing but um they definitely asked during the uh this week's q a if there will be other future events like this and of course daniel erickson who is uh the lead designer now basically he said uh, we definitely have more surprises coming in the future but we don't want to have the same format or become predictable. 
we'll say that uh, these surprises will come in a variety of sizes that range from stealthy rolled out like magenta crystal hunts to uh, to full server wide explosions like the Ratgull Plague. So I can see like I, I kind of like that. Like um, if they could put small nuances in the game. Like uh, if one remembers where apparently even it was even there at launch was a way to get that uh, the midget to crystal, but the only way to ever figure out that it was you had to pick up on small little lore items and stuff like that that would eventually kind of explain it. And I, I like games that have little, I guess Easter egg things like that where it's like it's un, it's you know it's unexpected and it's in the game, but you just have to. Find yeah, it. that just like when the whole magenta thing came about, I was just like blown away. I'm like, who the fuck took the time to like figure yeah. this shit out? And that's like also there is now another, um, I guess, Easter egg. There is a pet you can get on Alderaan. You need an egg and you get this egg. You take it to Tatooine. You put it underneath this like incubator. And it's like whoever fucking spends the time to figure this out. You have a lot of free time, dude. And wow, that's just it's amazing. Yeah, I, I'm Wait, definitely. I'm gonna bring up the Datacron one. Well, I mean, like, um, well, the Datacrons in general, were like, that was the whole point of that. No, where, like, like, oh, the plus ten. Oh, the plus, the plus 10. ten. Well, I'm sure that actually probably. Oh, you know, yeah. I mean, you're exploring. You're like, I could see them finding the museum, but then yeah, actually probably going through the steps to that yeah, the, are pretty. Yeah, involved. like you have to go to Corellia and yeah. stuff like that from the Imperial side. And it's like, and now it's bugged, so that's even sweeter. Um. Oh, it's fun, yeah, so uh, if you're someone that hasn't got it yet, <laughs> Dhaka, um, have fun. It was fun. Wow. They couldn't let me in. But um, no, I do, I do really like when games do this kind of stuff, though. Where it's... um, It shows some kind of interesting look into the, the design of this stuff. Where it's like, these guys are just kind of just like looking around. They're like, oh, let's put little, little, little nuances, little like adds to the additives to the game where it's like not everyone's gonna figure this stuff out right right and it's like it's it's special when someone actually does kind of figure it out because trust me half those datacron things there's no way in hell i could have figured that stuff out because like even some of the locations that had these things in and like that and like my big thing is i want them to continue having those things in the game makes it like fun. Yeah, it does make it fun, and it's, it's an added level of thing. Because there's not too many MMOs that had this kind of stuff, like, at that level. Like, don't get me wrong, I wish WoW would have had more stuff like that. That would have been awesome. Right. But, um, they, they unfortunately, they did not. But, uh, they had this stuff at launch, and it's good to see that they are continually having these these little, like, I don't want to say mini games, but little, like, it rewards the kind of players who are more of the explorative type players. And like us even being like, you know, mostly raiders and like like hardcore players and stuff like that. We usually aren't those kind type of people, but I appreciate seeing that stuff. And even the challenge of like getting the datacron stuff was fun. Like I actually did have fun because you know, at that point it's okay you, you almost turn to the MMO into like a platformer. Yeah, in a way. We're yeah. like having to you know a bad platformer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean it's not as, you know, intuitive and stuff with the, you know, some jumping skills and stuff like that. But, but it was still fun though. Like, it, it was out of the norm for an MMO. And, like, I, I thought that was actually like, pretty fun. But, um, I went through some of the uh, the questions for this week. Unfortunately, one of the biggest things is, someone actually did ask in 1.3, will we have the dual spec, which is something that we are all been waiting for. Especially coming from the rating background, where it's really, really helpful sometimes to be able to switch between specs, between what the fight is. Uh, unfortunately, no, that will not be coming in 1.3. I guess because right now, apparently, they wanted to stream down what 1.3 was and focus more on getting the dungeon. Fi well, I don't say dungeon finder. It's a group finder. It's a dungeon dungeon finder. Just not. Sir, I, it's just from my understanding, it's not like server, like different servers. It's within the server. So, yeah, that's what I assume it yeah. is first. It's um. That and then of course obviously I would imagine one but they don't mention it here but I imagine one point three obviously is gonna weigh heavy on the rated battleground. I'm hoping that would be very nice. Yeah, since I mean they pulled it from launching in one point two, I imagine one point three is gonna be heavy into that. But then also some of the more interesting news for those who are big into legacy and uh alt stuff like that. 
Someone actually did ask, are we going to see new playable species? And um, Daniel Ekstrand came in and said, he said he cannot, currently cannot comment on what species you will see. However, he did say that you will see more species added this year. <laughs> Trend Ocean Jedi, yeah. So I'm definitely, yeah, definitely kind of stoked about that. Because, I mean, it's, that's one of the biggest things. Like, I, the, I wanted, um, maybe Mon Calamari would have been really cool. The giant head. Uh, I wanted to see, like, I personally wanted to play um, the uh, the Nautilin. Like, that's 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 the one of the species that I really wanted to see. And there's a couple in the game, like yeah. NDCs. Right, but um, I, I actually wanted my character to be that. So I mean, that would actually be kind of cool to see a lot of those come in. Although I'd love to see them actually go kind of outside the box, though, and like make some like really Both odd. Them. Or um, what's what's the the pig people one? Uh, you know the one um, the ones who are like always Jabba's guards. Oh, God, son of a bitch! I. <laughs> So you're supposed to be a resident Star Wars nerd, and that's, that's Shut the up. one. Dude, I'm hungover right now. I'm struggling with my. It's gonna start with a my Star Wars lore. You know what I'm talking about, though. Like the, yes, the big yes. green, the pig guys. Yeah, yeah, the pig guys. I would love yeah, to see those. My white companion was. Oh, see, so yeah, like, like I would. Demorian. I would love to see that be be one of them, though. Although, like, I think the problem with that with the uh, playable species, they want them all to be able to speak basic, like you know, human basic and stuff like that. Because I mean. It would make for some interesting stuff. Same as like, I doubt you'd ever see like, you know, like an Ewok Jawa. or Jawa or something like that. Like, I doubt you'd ever see those as like playable species. There is one playable species that I am very shocked <clears throat> that is not in game, and that literally is a Wookie. I am. I was actually really shocked to see a Wookie not being playable. Well, I think that's one of the things is because they wanted him. It would not make sense for the Wookie to speak basic. Like human basics. Well, so no, I think that's you the would reason be, why they didn't. But it would there. be like if you do the bounty hunter story, like when he, the way he speaks, I mean, you just understand that language with him yelling and all that. Oh, what are you talking about? Like for actually like typing and stuff like that? Like well, if, yeah, you're, yeah, if you're yeah, doing yeah. like slash say as a Wookiee? Well, no, no, no. I mean, in the, um, the dialogue conversations, like that's why they didn't want to have Wookiee be a playable one because they'd basically have like that. They'd pretty much throw out that whole voice acting thing, and it would just be like, you know, Wookiee noises. Oh, that yeah. would be the response back for everything. And like, yeah, I don't get wrong, on their end of it, I, I can understand what the apprehensive of it, but as the player, I would be totally fine with that. Like, just just type out what my player says. You know, like, you know, those, those general responses, just leave it as it is. Because I kind of figured out what my player's saying, because I mean, he's, I mean, he's, he's a Wookiee. He, he, he's giving the Wookiee response back. Like I, I think that for like our peers and stuff like that would have been great, yeah. And that would have that would put him right into that character, where it's like, oh yeah, you know, of course he doesn't speak basic human, but and you know what, I'm also like, I think I think because there's there's un- underestimating like really what that would do for the for the R- RP crowd, and I, I think they're worrying too much about like the voice acting and stuff like that, and like it would actually be even cheaper just get someone to like record like thirty different Wookie sounds. And just kind of just interlay them into the, the conversation stuff, and like yeah. it, it, would, it would totally work fine. And like that's all I really had to do for that. But um, moving on to stuff, um, one of the interesting thing because one of the big things we're just talking about is the what are they going to do with the low the low server populations on certain servers and also certain um, transfers. Um, obviously, right now we do know that one of the biggest things they're talking about in 1.3 is actually offering server transfers. However, they are going to specifically ad- uh, address low pop servers specifically by themselves, and uh, they actually are going to offer like free transfers to and from specific servers to try to balance out the uh, the server population across the board. Yeah, well, it's you know, it's, it's kind of. I guess about time that they're they're going to be doing this because um, yeah these some of these servers I know like ours is, is kind of um, ours is in the middle. I I honestly would disagree. I would say we're a little bit less than that. Because I mean like the, on the Empire side we only have what like what three raiding guilds. 
Yeah, there's a lot more than that. Is, um, yeah. No, well, well, apparently I don't pay attention. But, um. <laughs> well, like, original ours is in the middle. You have other ones like the Fat Man server, which is overpopulated to the point where they have like 45 minute queues. So, I mean, and then obviously there's some that are like really dead. So, I mean, it's. And, and if anyone remembers from. Because I hate keep comparing it to Vanilla WoW, but it's really the best comparison. Vanilla WoW was like that. And there were certain servers that were overpopulated. There were certain servers that were completely dead. Like, well, hell, like a cloud, you remember like Duratan, we would talk about that. Whereas like the server we originally came from, from WoW, where we left, a lot of their guilds left because, you know, the server just kind of sucked. And after that, totally. that whole server was dead. Yeah, and like they offered to bring people, you know, to that server. Dark or... democracy still there. <laughs> the one guild they've been—they're holding on. It's like, <laughs> it's like eight years later, they're holding on. But um, yeah, like that—that's happened to a lot of games like that. But um, my biggest thing is, I just think they just had too many servers at launch. Well, of course, they, I mean, they, being realistic, it was too many servers at launch. I mean, they expected this game to be huge have so many people and then you know obviously everybody knows all the bullshit like the stuff that just came out should have been at launch people didn't the, the game apparently didn't live up to people's hype or whatever bullshit so yeah so now they've got to fix that and adjust the servers well, I think with any MMO like the thing is they should have started from a lower amount of servers and who cares if the servers are full you know what I mean like that that you're actually by doing that, you're kind of creating a supply and demand situation anyways, though. Right, you start low. By, having, yeah, you, by starting low, and then let it stuff fluctuate out for, like, two months. And then now you, like, because no matter what, any release of new MMO sees a surge. Oh, when of course, they, uh, of course. first open up. Yeah, but then, you know, they're afraid people will leave the game because they, you know, they can't play. Which is a understandable concern. It's an understandable concern, but at, at that point... It should have been should have started with lower numbers as far as servers go, anyways, and then expanded from there out. So I mean, I mean, could you imagine if we were trying to like level and then we couldn't get on because there's too many? You're people assuming we ever got off cloud. <laughs> <laughs> I've been logged in since day one, bro. I just have not logged off yet. I mean, like Blake. Blake didn't log off until he hit fifty. So I mean it. Yeah, that, that was that happened. pretty much exactly how that happened. So I mean, it's yeah. it's it's one of those things where it's like it, they should have just started smaller. Yeah, but that we're Blake's a very small. Oh, oh he's he's the one percenters. Oh wow, you you are, you are in the <laughs> one percent. Tour, I guess. <laughs> nice, God. nice. But I mean, it's I, I I wouldn't be surprised if we eventually see like because everyone's really dreaded is the whole like server murder thing. There's so much bad connotation that's surrounded with you know even saying murders and stuff like that. Yeah, I would because, rather um, I would rather them say, hey, we're, instead of doing a merger, we're going to do a server transfer, and you can go to these servers, and I'd rather scope out the servers to see what they're like instead of just being forced you know merge and then you know this server may be full of fucking douchebag. And then, but this but, server. But even one of those things where it's like, like to me, I th I would I would have liked it if they would have designed the game so it actually operates on very few amount of servers. Yeah. But it just happens to hold like thousands and thousands of players like per server, like that would have been awesome. Almost kind of like what is it? Eve does that where it's like a single server. But you know, it has everyone who plays the game is on that server, so it's like it's a giant, massive thing, like um. That would actually have been really, really cool, but extremely complicated to do at the same time. But um, I know, if people are really weird about that whole thing with the merger, what I think they're probably going to do is just they're going to try to force filter stuff out. Like, obviously, they'll be trying to pull people from the extremely overpopulated servers to uh, trickle them out to other servers. But we also do know that one of the biggest things that's also happening now is that they are actually expanding WoW into... No. You <laughs> dickhead. Impressive. But one of the things we do know, they are actually expanding Tor into new markets. Which um, is kind of interesting because um, what is happening is actually really close to the way what 
happened with when WoW expanded, where it's, you know, WoW says like, oh, they have 11 million subscribers and stuff like that. And, you know, and like, oh, Tor only has like 1.7. First of all, WoW does not have 11 million subscribers. And like, I hate the people who try to put these numbers out and everything. They're like, oh, that's, this is how much they have and stuff like that. Like, honestly, not. If you actually look at hard numbers between North America and European added together, it's a little over 3 million for um, WoW. Yeah, because they don't take into account, like, when they do those... Those, those are actual subscription numbers. Yeah, yeah, when they... When they say 11 million, you know, they they count people that are doing the trial, all those gold farmers that do that level one bullshit. So, of course, and it's, it's fucking stupid. And even then, they're like, the temporary account stuff that happens with the uh, the Asian market stuff, thing like that, because it's completely done a different way. So, I mean, it's, um, they, those numbers are grossly inaccurate. Yeah. But, you know, but, it's, yeah, but it sounds like it's... trying to do, like, game time or something? Yeah, they do it by game time stuff, and, like, with the accounts. Like, so, those numbers aren't anywhere near accurate but yet you know they, they want to throw up this big giant number because it makes them seem that like no one can ever match us but um it's gonna be interesting now because obviously that 1.7 is gonna go up when for tour when you talk about opening up into completely new regions and markets so I mean, obviously for them they're actually going to be tapping into the eastern european market I which actually is um pretty familiar with MMOs like uh we even had friends and stuff like Cloud who played you know uh, like Romania like you know like, like the, that, those kind of regions and stuff like that like the, the Eastern Europe now, I, I'm wondering because they haven't really talked about this in, in definition is if they're going to have their own servers specifically or they're going to allow them to go into the current servers I could see them having their own server due to like like latency like obviously Australian players they have such high latency on the North American servers, and I mean, or I'm just trying, they, they just give them the option, like, hey, you can either play on U.S. servers or you can play on your own servers. Your call. I would imagine that the Eastern Europe they would just be able to play on the European servers, mm -hmm. which um also an interesting uh, market because that's they're tapping into the Middle East, which mm. I thought was kind of odd because that's not really you don't really think of them as as an MMO market. But honestly, it's a different kind of IP when you're talking about Star Wars. So it, it might be kind of an interesting market there. Obviously, like, you know, some of the uh, big stuff here, they're really trying to tap into, like, Egypt, Dubai, Saudi Arabia, like, um, one of those wealthy Middle Eastern countries. So it's, that's going to be kind of an, an interesting dynamic. Um, I'm wondering, like, if they do go on the current servers and the way that it's set up, they don't set up their own servers specifically. They might actually balance out all those server numbers. Like, on their own, just by opening up to completely new markets. Right. So that's that's going to be an interesting take on this stuff. And it's going to make... Because a lot of the naysayers are saying that, like, oh, yeah, Tor only has 1.7 right now, and in a year time, it'll be at 1.2. Obviously, that's not accurate now at all. I just... Since now you're opening up completely you know almost like you know a whole new hemisphere to 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 the game so it's like it, i always find those bean counter people really interesting and i can i can guarantee you that it, it's a big battle between you know higher up companies that are trying to like, get these reports made of what how much this game's numbers has because it does affect overall subscription numbers because you know no one wants to be part of the game where it's like oh they're losing subs why, why do I want to play that game then you know, like yeah this game has 100,000 members this game has 3 million it's like well obviously uh, the 3 million one is a little bit better but um I, I, I Middle Eastern I just don't see them be, like they like Star Wars over there I mean that yeah I man everyone loves Star Wars well I mean I, I could Aren't see they busy blowing themselves up <laughs> hey it doesn't matter <laughs> it doesn't matter what language it is Hayden Christensen is a terrible actor in every language. So, I mean... <laughs> they, they, <laughs> oh, they, they, I'm, I'm sure, they, I'm sure they, they could pick that up on no matter what country it is. Yeah. But, I mean, anyways, I think because Star Wars has been around for a really long time. And, you're, and you're, when you talk about stuff, honestly, I'm talking about, you know, episode four, five, and six is, is really what I'm talking about. So, I mean, honestly, even in those countries, I'm sure it has its own popularity. And, um... You'd be surprised. A lot, a, lot, a lot of foreign countries are really big into that, you know, North American style MMO stuff. So, I mean, it, it's going to be an interesting market. I think 
I have no doubt that Eastern Europe is going to be fine. Oh, yeah, yeah. Eastern Europe, I, yeah. Usually what we like, they like, you know, minus a couple yeah. things. So, I mean, I, it's going to be an interesting market thing there. As far as the Middle Eastern stuff, I don't know if they're going to have their own servers because that seems kind of like it's going to be, or if not, they'd probably almost kind of do like WoW did with China where they outsourced it through like a different company stuff kind of things. I could see maybe something like that kind of happening, but it will definitely cha greatly change those subscription numbers and probably how they're published because that was not EA who published those numbers. That was actually, it was some outside company that was like, that were, you know, I paid by who, I don't know, to publish those numbers. I'm going to say it's Activision, but whatever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I would not oh, doubt snap. it. But um, that's one of those things. So it's, it's going to be, I think in the next year, it's going to be quite an interesting pace to see how the subscription numbers really do plan out now. As far as I, I say right now, in a year time, I could see it being around three million. Oh, is that's what I'm that's, global? Yeah, that's what I was thinking when I saw that they were going to be going overseas. I, yeah, three million. Um, yeah. Now, do you see like a peak and then dropping down? Um, it's going to peak a little bit when they first open up these markets. I'm me personally. I'm going to say five million peak, and then it's going to be three million steady. Yeah, yeah, I could definitely see something like that. But um, with that, we're going to take a quick commercial break. When we get back, we're going to give our breakdown of the newest operation in 1.2, which is uh, Operation Explosive Conflict. Commercials have been removed for broadcast purposes. Okay, we're back. We're just now tuning in. We're NothingGaming.com's Nothing But Tour podcast. And uh, as I mentioned before, we're actually going to take this part of the show to talk about the newest operation in 1.2, which is uh, Explosive Conflict, or otherwise known as the planet Denova, as uh, a lot of people have seen it in-game. So, um, actually, all of us here have actually taken part of the hard mode, uh, Denova, and I uh, definitely kind of wanted to get everyone's kind of idea, like, pretty much how they felt about the new operation, especially in comparison to the older operations that we saw on, at launch. I know um, off the bat, the uh, the first boss that all of us had a, experience with uh, was uh, Toth and Zorn. AKA which, um, Twins. AKA, AKA Twins number one. No, no, yeah, Twins one. Twins Twins one is uh, what we call that. Um, I personally very much so like the fight as a um because it's it's an interesting fight it actually requires the tanks to communicate and actually move the bosses back and forth and stuff like that and uh to try to alleviate a lot of the movement from the raid so i i, I actually kind of like that a lot more it actually does force you to use your cooldowns a lot more too but um i don't know like what what do you how do you guys think of the fight Let's uh, go and start with you, Ducks, and what? How do you think? The whole fucking thing sucked. They fucking shut the company down. <laughs> this game is fucking terrible. <laughs> I echo. <laughs> no, um, the... no, I actually, uh, compared it to EV, it, 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 this is like a huge step up for BioWare and how they designed it. And yeah, like the fact that you and me actually have to do something now, kind of annoying a little bit because I was enjoying the just kind of stand there, yada, yada, yada. But, um, yeah, it, it, like being a being a fat lazy yeah, dude. Yeah, pretty much. Just hitting hitting taunt whenever like, it comes I up. I like acting like I do in real life. Also tanking. I just sit there and do nothing. Um, <laughs> you you tank IRL. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I did like it, and, and it's not so much like you and me have more work to do to Haka, because uh, obviously you're mm. my off tank. <clears throat> um, yeah, <laughs> sure. bad joke. Um, like also the raid also had like pretty much everybody has to pay attention and they are responsible pretty much for not being stupid. Um, that's always a good place to be yes, in a raid situation. Yes. Like you know something's wrong with the raid when you can just be an idiot and it's just, it's totally fine. Yeah. Um, I, well, comes to mind thinking of Nax 2.0. Yeah, right. And it's, it's like, like oh yeah, I just I just stumble in here and. I, 
No, I have well, a loop. You, yeah, you look at like EV, like we cleared it like with seven people and then on Soa, one person died, so we had six. We, st we still fucking cleared it. It's just like, yeah, a nightmare. A nightmare. And too. then it's like, you go on this and it's like, yeah. if one person dies, it's kind of really hurts you pretty bad. Um, oh, yeah. So I, I do like it where everybody is like, they have to pay attention because there's so much shit going on and then just, yeah. Definitely has um, some pretty tight and rig timers on these fights too. I know, um, well, Blake, you were actually healing it. Like, yes. from what you saw from the original okay, the, operations to the this, original. Okay. How, how did you how did you feel? Uh, well, I never healed the original ones. But you, so, but you played in them, obviously. You've done them. Uh, well, the fights are. Are we just talking about the first fight or just the first fight? Okay, right the now. first fight. Well, twins won. <laughs> um, it was harder than any fight in Eternity Vault, except maybe so because he was fucking bugged as hell when we did it when I was there. Yeah. Uh, well, you know what I mean, like supposed to, how it's supposed how it's supposed to be. To be. Yeah. Uh, hardest well, like, fight. Was, we, we, there was no there was uh, there was no bugs that we saw at all. No, not that with I know the, of. Um, yeah, not with, with not with Nova. twins one though. No. Yeah. Um, Which that's fucking. Thankfully, good. Thank like that's a that's almost a good fresh air, like your know, breath of fresh air. It's like <laughs> okay, it's a new raid. Like where's the bugs at? You know, like, I that's, mean, that's pretty much what you expect. But it, it was it was it was really clean, and I it, that it, I, I appreciate that the most. It was clean, and you know, it's always good when you don't die of AIDS <laughs> at all in the instance. <laughs> um, that hasn't happened. Good so that was good. For, uh, but no, about the too. fight. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. he learned. Wow, Cloud! Wow. Probably from eating dog, right? Oh, yeah, exactly. Another another off-air conversation. <laughs> so awkward. Full of those. Uh, but about mm. Jesus, fucking let me go! Holy shit! You're the one who's okay, talking Cloud. about. Okay, You listening? It's so <laughs> random and like so out of context. It's like moving on now. I can't move on. Cloud just keeps on sucking me back in. I'm going to eventually get Blake to kind of wrap up what he's <laughs> saying. At some point, I will. What were we it's talking about again? Back in. Toth and Zorn. Okay. Uh, I had to heal it, so I hated it. The end. Mm -hmm. Well, no, it's still... But it was definitely better than what we had before. Especially the no big bugs thing was fucking... Yeah, it worked. So, huge. big plus. It, it worked and it was, it was difficult. But it worked, and it was difficult by its it mechanics, was difficult and not enough. difficult, but not difficult by being full of bugs. Yeah, you, it, you know what I mean? Like that's that's two completely different things. So it's it's where you want it to be. Where it's like, yeah, honestly, if something's full of bugs, it's it's not even fun. I mean, it could have just been gear, but it was definitely not the easiest thing to heal. Yeah, the tank damage was really fucking high. On you, Duxon. You're the off tank. Mm-hmm. Son of a game. bitch. Yeah, you are. But, um, <laughs> but I mean, it's like, and, and none of that has to do there because like both the tanks are really well geared. So I mean, it, it, the boss is just flat out. It's, starting. It, it's up to a next level now, where it's like, okay, it's not like, you know, EV, where it's like the the boss is just kind of hit like a wet noodle, and you're like, you know, it doesn't really matter. Like, it, you don't even need like someone in tanking gear to tank half the fucking bosses. But I mean. It's a. It's definitely good now. Okay, like, these are actual bosses. Like these actually hit. Like they're. You know, if it hits someone who's not a tank, they're going to kill them. You know, yes. it, and that's that's where it. That's where it's supposed to be. You know, like that's that's the kind of stuff you expect in a raid. Yes. But I mean, um, if you had to give it a grade, Blake, what what would you give Toth and Zorn? Uh. Okay. Well, you keep on calling them by their names. It's Twins One. Get it right. <laughs> twins number um, one. Twins one is better, in my opinion, than Twins two. So I give it a six. Well, no, no, no. I go seven. That's interesting because I actually like the seven. Oh no! Better, fuck but, that! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fuck that! We'll talk about that. Those later. are actually that's that's actually uh, to me they're more difficult, but yeah, um, less fun. I don't know. I what do you think about uh, it? Cloud? It was DPS. It was. Yeah. It, was, it wasn't much different from EV for me. Well, yeah, like, I mean, come on.
Like I, that's kind of like you have to do anyways. Though is DPS though. He's like, I just want to be able to sit here and yeah. do a lot of numbers. No, he wants to press tracer missile. Yeah, he like I want to sit here and just spam tracer missile over and over again. But um, yeah, for you guys, I mean, you like just surprisingly, shoot them and then you run away from stuff on the ground. Yeah, isn't that Which is, every uh, fight? That's pretty much every fight for especially ranged DPS. That's like every like because like, I played Hunter forever, and I can tell you right now that the way I played that <laughs> is like the way I played ninety percent of every single boss over the game over eight years. So it's like uh, you cut like, it oh, on shoot a little bit, Lord. then like watch out for stuff on the ground. That's like the one fight I got to do something different. You know what I mean? Like those are the special fights. But um, yeah, for range DPS, it, it kind of fell into a lot of that where it's like okay, watch out for stuff on the ground and just kind of DPS the boss. Obviously. The way we position the fight, it's set up so ranged don't have to move very much. Uh, like they don't like to. Obviously, for melee, it's a little bit different because they have to deal with a whole bunch of other things going on. But I mean, in general, I think I agree with Blake. I probably would give it a seven, especially for a first, first boss. fight, first boss, and that, and you want the first boss to be decent. You really do. I mean, because that sets the tone for for a lot of things, and it kind of lets you know up front and early that this is a big step up from the previous raid where it's like okay if you can't kill us you're, you're you need to like fucking learn how to play or something like you know like you really need to go back and start doing some you know easy Agreed. mode stuff and learn how to raid because this is actual raiding now so i mean i i really like that um artistically uh, i'm not a big fan of the instance like even the outside stuff. I mean, it's just kind of bland. Yeah, it's pretty boring. I actually like the look of EV more. <laughs> what? Just, just the the look. Not really. Mm. Well, like I liked the big center room and stuff with the big giant column stuff going up and stuff like that. That that actually is kind of cool looking. It kind of reminded me a little bit of Old War. But um, in general though, uh, Denova, meh. It's kind of plain looking. Like it's just, it, you're just outside, like on some island thing somewhere you know there's like there's robots I think that could have been a lot more imaginative but I'm definitely more forgiving on that because the boss fights are decent so I mean that's really why I care yeah, more too about. bad the trash is actually harder than the goddamn bosses oh <laughs> I disagree I I would definitely disagree oh, right, with that. I mean, dude, like, that's, that trash though is pretty brutal on some of those bowls yeah, CC. Um, some of them are. CC. Yeah, but see, yeah. see, I'm not yeah, basing it on exactly. CC because the reason Dahaka is just like, oh, it's just like, oh, we eat all down. And then <laughs> these things just start one shotting everybody. And the is like, what are you doing? Pay attention. Oh, man. What yeah, happened? what happened? Who's fault? Hey, and there he is, stealthy the entire hey. time, just sitting there. It's like, you bastard. <laughs> Years of wow have drilled that into me where it's like, you don't need a CC trash. But, um. Batty. <laughs> No, I yes, you do actually really need to CC the trash, which which is a good. It, it's an interesting step back where it's like, because you go in there and you get this mindset like you know trash is just trash. You just go in there, grab it up, and say we it. And um, it's good to see them go back to the way some earlier uh, raid stuff used to be, where it's like okay, trash is actually like, if you don't pay attention, you're gonna die and wipe this stupid shit just because you didn't decide to CC. So I mean. I like that. I hope they stick with that kind of throughout their all of their raids. That it, it makes you know trash not just you know just a, a thing to waste time between bosses, whereas actually you have to think a little bit. But um, moving on to twins number two. Yes. Which um, I think Cloud said this best that like he didn't like the fact that the first two bosses were basically twin boss fights. Mm -hmm. Where it's, um, and I, I, I 100% agree with you. Like, I like the fight. However, this fight should have been the third boss and not the second boss. Or just not a twins fight at all. But you, you know what I mean? Like, you, you need, when you're designing raids, you need to pace the style of fights. So the, the one is not too similar to the one after it. Or, you know, a, a little dull and a little weird because... Basically, with Toth and Zorn, you had two whole little camps that are kind of set up and doing their own thing. 
and like except for you know the tanks still have to move stuff back and forth between each other and in this one it's even more so in that way where it's like two separate groups doing their own thing and you know and hoping at the end it works out um for those uh who know what we're talking about we're talking about stormcaller and firebrand which is these these two turrets that basically appear um and you know it's kind of like the uh defense systems or whatever of uh the nova and basically you gotta take them out before you can proceed now the the fight's interesting because each tank obviously has its their own little special things behind them like they, they do some very unique things apart from each other like uh i know on cloud's perspective you had to deal on firebrand which you had to be the person outside of the tank that was having to cleanse himself off of the missile strike of S ability. So like you were you were not you were not doing the typical range DPS stand there and just kind of pew pew kind of thing. Like you were actually having to actively, you know, be somewhat of a member into the like yep. the fight. And like what you do actually, you know, does something for the fight instead of just I'm gonna random DPS, I'm just gonna stand here and hope that I don't die. But um that's pretty good on that stuff. I, I I actually like this fight because there are quite a few mechanics that are going on. Um, each side has to learn how to basically deal with it. And then at the same time, both the tanks continually still communicate with each other as they're having to jump from one tank to the other to basically help, you know, the other the their other friend tank from not being destroyed by theirs. Because obviously there's um obviously Firebrand puts a debuff on the tank that makes him take more damage from Firebrand. So you basically got to switch over. I I like stuff like this, but it's just too similar to the first boss for me. But um, the actual mechanics in the fight, I do like. There's a lot of movement going on for everyone because at some point everyone actually has to get off the tank and get into shields and not damage the shield themselves. So, I mean, it's it's a pretty interesting fight. I don't know. What, how do you think about yeah, it, Yeah, it's like Toth and Zorn. But I mean, like, if you're on with a storm collar, you have double destruction. You have to work with. You know, I got my debuff. I have to work with. If I'm on firebrand, so you got to switch a little bit. Um, yeah, same as Toth and Zorn. It's kind of. Eh. I do like you have to be conscious of where the turrets are facing yes. the entire time. Yeah, as a t as a tank, you have to. I be, mean, because you have to be careful of where your little tank group is. So, a, yeah, as, so a, they, as opposed to where, what direction you're facing that turret, because obviously there's a times they get to get off the turret at any, and they might be in front of the turret, and you need to quickly you know, move it over to a side or something like that. So I mean, I I like that stuff, and it's kind of a nuance you don't really pick up on unless you're a tank. But um, it, yeah, it, it's pretty it's, good. I mean, I, I mean, yeah, it's like Tough and Zorn. I mean, I, I I give it my opinion a. You know, same thing as 7 out of 10. I mean, it's a lot of shit going on. I, I do like fights like that. You and me have to do a lot for once again. Um, See, so yeah, I give it, you know, 7 out of 10. What do you, th what do you think about it, Blake? You, you had to deal with the, the healing. With yes, the of course too. I had to heal. Um, Yeah, so I had to... That's actually, was, that was actually harder to heal than the first fight. It was very stressful. Very, very uh -huh. stressful. But for, like, some of the wrong reasons. Um... So I had to deal with Stormcaller, healing that. And uh, what okay. that meant was... Which, by far, that probably it has to be the harder side probably. to heal. From what I could tell, when I've seen other people heal that, that seems to be the harder of the two tanks. So... For the healer. Probably. So here's what you have to deal with when you're healing it. Um, first off, the tank damage. Uh, you know, it's as you would expect. It's not that bad, but that's not the big problem. Mm -hmm. um, you have to take what's called double destruction. Um, the tank will move the boss in front of you, and you and another person will take a hit and will, um, I'm not explaining this well at all. Uh, you will take a hit and it'll put a big dot on you. It'll tick for, yeah. um, 2k a tick and it lasts for like 10, 15 seconds or something. Um, that really, really drains your resources when healing. Uh, because keeping yourself the tank and the people who took the double destruction up it's not the easiest thing to do especially as an op no, definitely not because if you have to burst at any point you get punished for it pretty hard 
Um, and even then, like you, you don't get too much of a break. In no, the there's the the biggest break is if you get lucky and things go well on the lightning rod phase. <laughs> but that's only if things go well. And, and if people understand that is, um, every so often in the fight they'll bring up a, a defense system thing, which is these these shields appear either. It can be on the side or the front or even in the back of the tank. It's just random on which side it is. Yes. But um, what happens then is everyone from that tank's group has to move under the shield and then basically kill the adds and hopefully not kill the shield generator that's keeping the shield, like, keeping them alive. But on Stormcar this entire time, the tank itself is actually outside because there's these lightning rods that keep getting shot down at where the tank is. But um, I know from doing this part that it's not the lightning rod does damage. You continually also take damage from the rockets that are coming down. Oh, you do? Yeah, yeah, you do. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, it's um, it's not it's interesting side in the tank. And I know it's rough on the healer on that side. Well, the thing is, because like, you still have to you still have to stay in range of you. Yeah. And, the th- and not get and not get it too far away. That's the- but then you also don't want to fuck that group over by blocking them with these giant lightning rod things either so it's um i mean look yeah that's that's one of the more interesting sides you go into that phase and you're like okay this isn't too bad i can regen a little bit it's it's the opposite kind of um if (laughs) if the they give you false hope yeah because like if you get lucky the tank manages to like dodge everything somehow yeah and then you're like okay well i can just deal with the ads killing the group, and not the tank. Yeah, they, well, because they don't do that much. Uh, it's it's enough to where you have to deal with it. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, like the biggest problem I have with this fight is getting back to the tank, because you know after the the phase is over, the missiles, you have to run back mm-hmm. onto them and get set up again. Um, yes. My problem, I don't have any speed up, or like mobility. I guess. Because... Because you're lacking sprint. Yeah, I don't have a sprint like that, or anything yeah. like that. So the tank would be up there. I would be line of sighted, if not by the trees, by the tank itself. <laughs> the tree, like, yeah, the trees are pretty awful. It's such a pain in the ass. I had tanks die because I couldn't get the first jump onto the tank. <laughs> it, it was awful. Yeah. Awful. I, I, all I hear is you need to, you learn, you need to learn how to jump. Well, you tell me... Oh. <sighs> <laughs> I don't have time to think about you. that. I know, I know. Like, obviously, there's a lot of things going on. And, and obviously, the tank has to... Dude, dude, hold oh, on. I'll, I'll the jump it, onto the, the tank turret. is not the easiest jump I've ever made. It no, is dumb. It's, not, it's, it's true. It's um, it's a very narrow margin to being at the peak of your character's jump, is, is the top of the tank. It's worse when so coming I mean, from uh, the back, because you have to yeah, circle around to the front. Yeah, and Powerful. with being like in the back, you know, obviously with me having force charge, I can jump and be already in the front, and I have yeah. to pray to God that I have a cooldown up because I know it's going to take you guys yep. a minute. It's different, like if I'm at the side or in the front, because you'll you'll be able to get me. But being so far in the back, it's like, uh, shit. Yeah, and and that is some of the and it's some of the RNG factor of the fight, where because you don't you don't know where the defense system, basically the shield, get to stay under is yes. going to be at. Yeah. Like, obviously, if it's on the side, it's the easier one to do. And that's why on the normal version of the fight, that is where it always is. It's not going to be on the front or the back like it is on the hard mode version of the fight, which is much harder to deal yeah. with. I mean, I guess to, like, but, I mean, my final thoughts on this boss, because I'm sure we're done talking about it. Uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, it's hard mode, and this was the first boss that I really felt was hard. Because... It's definitely hard. It's definitely a step up from the first. It was boss. extremely, extremely stressful yeah. on the healing. Like you, you had to be on the ball, or at least I felt like if I wasn't, it was over in like in an instant. Um, yeah. But that normally that would be a good thing, but because of like the line of sight issues, I can't give it that good of like a score, like a five maybe, because that ended oh, a couple that's a lot, attempts. That's a lot. You, that you, you must have really, really it hated that attempts. that jump. You hated that Dude, jump going so from the back much. I'm going to the front. Five. Trying to keep a tank alive. It's not even cool. <laughs> that's kind of inter- that's an interesting take on that. Like, um, obviously, 
for you know being a tank is not that big of a deal for me. But, but you um, can sprint up, yeah. So I can just sprint and make that yeah. jump. But um, yeah, I would still give it a seven. Like the only reason I would, I would actually would score it even much higher if one it would have been in it, if it wasn't the second boss. Like if this was the third boss, I probably would have given a, a higher score just because it would have made better for the flow of the, the entire raid. As an individual fight by itself, it's a very good fight, and it, um, it's a good benchmark, too. Really, it oh, is. Oh, yeah, and your DPS has to not suck. Oh, yeah. yeah we hit the enraged every attempt. Yeah. And, like, you're basically praying right there at the end, where it's like, well, we're going <laughs> to die, we're going to kill this thing. It's going to be really close either way. So, I mean, I will. although I will say that their enrages aren't instant kills. Like... As long as you know you don't have defense systems yeah. up when you know they shoot rockets and stuff on everyone. Um, if it's just the enrage and they're just kind of just hitting the tank, obviously you're gonna pop some cooldowns and uh, hope that you live through it long enough. But um, yeah, I I like it and I like it that it's that tight. It should be that tight. Being realistic that the the people's level of gear we have, like okay, they're they're geared out from the previous raid. And they are just now, and they're just enough to just make it past the the enrage timers. And like that, that's really where stuff should be. Because obviously, you know, as you as everyone progresses through these raids, they get more gear and so like that. It gets easier and easier every week to repeat this stuff. So I mean, it's it's good that it has this initial push where it's like it's very difficult. Um. And then obviously, it'll give you an idea of what that jump might be into the nightmare version yeah i was about to say like if that's what that fight is on hard i'm really glad i'm not playing for nightmare because <laughs> you don't want to i i'm i'm gonna save you a spot to come uh, no you're not <laughs> no you're not in dps oh, gear too no. that's the rule oh yeah, yeah in dps yeah, gear yeah. that was great that's a pro stuff. i had like 101 but, um, accuracy healing it's fun so they never miss bro <laughs> you are not you are not gonna miss nope. those heals darts 100 percent <laughs> but moving on um, to, I guess it's, you would call this the puzzle boss, because this is kind of the puzzle boss of of the raid. I'd call it luck. Where it's um, <laughs> it, the it's basically it's the the minefield, and um, I thought it was a, a better take on the puzzle stuff than what they did previously. Like I hated the uh, the pillar stuff from uh, EV. Like, that was just fucking stupid. Like, it was just kind of a gauntlet thing. You're just kind of lining the stuff up and, you know, oh, here's some loot. Um, really didn't like that. The one in Karagas is a little bit better with the uh, the trash compactor boss. Um, I don't think that's not what it's called, but yeah. That is what it's compactor. called. But, um, a little bit different. Uh, obviously, what happens is one of your tanks basically goes up inside the tower and starts, you know, mapping out this minefield that the the raid has to traverse so i mean it, it's kind of an interesting concept and there is a lot of cool little things going on with it however we did quickly find out that you you have a certain amount of time you have to get through this minefield in yes or or, or you're going to quickly wipe. it's pretty tight time and it, it is a very tight time a uh, tight time which um I honestly practice at doing it made it made it quick and like, right. a lot better. Like you, you were able to, to traverse right. it a lot faster because you kind of expect now like an order of things like to, to quicken the entire pace of the entire thing. Um, I think it's easily repeatable now, but when you're first learning that it's it's a little it can be slightly brutal on the on the timeline. And um, for people to understand how it works is basically. It, it looks like like a, just an open field to to the players. Um, you do have to someone goes up and actually starts clicking this grid, and what's going to happen is either a little grid slot is going to show up, it's going to show up red, which means that there's a mine there. And if you know, any of your players from your raid step on it, they they're going to die. Um, they also can lighten up where it shows up green. That's where your raid has to move. Now, as you're going through the grid. Basically, it'll open up the next slot. It will probably be a red slot, which means there's a mine there. So then the actual player who's in the tower has to actually use like a holographic version of themselves to go down onto the minefield and locate these stealth robots that um, they basically have to kill to disable the mine. 
Um, the only problem is in this entire time this is going on, your ray that's in the in the minefield is having to battle um, constant waves of rope of these droids, and at the same time these turrets that are up above the entire minefield. They, that's just con continually just hitting uh, them the entire time. The turret damage is not. That it's much. just more. It's more of just like a uh, annoying. Yeah, but it's a constant. New, but, no, oh, they have annoyance. their purpose. But, they have their purpose. Oh, they do have their purpose because when you take too long, those, you know, turrets that we're hitting for nothing. The are turrets just go. All right, around. we're done fucking around. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it. I I like the concept of the fight. It's different, at least. Um, it's, but to me, it still doesn't ever feel like a real boss kind of thing. Like, it almost it, to me, it feels almost like a glorified mini boss, where it's like, okay, this is a kind of a cool way to traverse this area. There's a little more going on. I don't know, um, ducks. How, how do you think about it? Because now you're on the ground. I, I, I honestly this, just don't like this fight. fight. It's just there's nothing special about yeah. it. Um, I mean, the most fun is what you're doing. Obviously, setting everything up. Other than that, I mean. Besides, your DPS has to be fucking amazing because you got to, you know, nuke these fucking big ass droids down as fast as possible so you can keep moving on. Other than that, I just it's and and then the the boss itself he doesn't really do anything. I mean, he hits a little hard, but nothing like oh shit, we need to do this. It's it's I just I give it four out four out of ten. You actually kind of agree with you on that. Like, oh, Cloud, what do you think about um, it? I only kind of came in for a little bit because I missed when you guys were learning the fight. And so, like, when yeah. I came in, it just it seemed fine. It just wasn't very interesting. Yeah. Yeah, not, not, not too much going on, really. Especially in comparison to the last mm -hmm. two bosses before it. Where there's a lot more going on. Um, I don't know, Blake, what, what would you give it? Uh, well... <laughs> See, this fight could have been better, but... Oh, I agree, yeah. Since when we were learning it, it felt so luck-based. It actually just pissed me off. Not to mention <laughs> there was, like, almost nothing to heal. You had to wait and pray that the RNG, like, liked you. And even then, when you yeah. got past the minefield, I don't even remember what the boss's name was. I don't remember if he actually did anything. Yeah, because it's once it's you so got there, it's forgettable. like... I give it a four. Yeah, like, oh, he's he's gonna die yeah. now because you're at the end. It, it's pretty much how it comes down to. Yeah, and um, I I I think Prince all agree. I would give this a four too. If not, now like would you three point five? Because this this is this is like the lower. This is like the low end of. Now, do you cost. think this should have been the second boss? Like, and then the twins. Okay. Oh yeah. yeah. That's, I don't you know, think oh, yeah. give, score, give the first boss, better. you know, like uh, yeah, be a pain in the ass, and then this this boss should be the second boss. We're like, okay, that boss is tough. So here, here's just a little break, and then you move into the fucking yeah, the like, tougher shit. I'm I'm totally fine with like certain raids having like yeah. a loot boss. You know what I mean? Where it's like, okay, a lot of these ones before this were really really tough. We're gonna here's a here's a gimme, Can you know, you? just to you know get you through this. Yeah, yeah. And it's, and like, you know, you can get through it and it's a little puzzle thing and like, and here, here's some extra loot that you can use to help you kill the third boss because he's a lot harder than everything you've seen so far. Like, I like that progression in a raid, but um, I think they kind of missed a good opportunity with the way they line these up. Um, I, I, it wouldn't have changed the score that I gave of the fight, but it would have changed the score of the fight that I gave for the second one. No, I wouldn't change that either. So, I mean... It, to me, that's like the the bigger thing like this, and maybe have the dude at the end do something. No, like, you know, can like, you tell me one ability he, he does? I don't remember. He drops he, aggro and charges someone. Is that else. That's, that's, thing that actually that's is kind of does a lot of damage. Like he'll uh, get put a red circle under someone. They didn't move out of the way, or it's gonna do like AOE damage, and that actually does hit kind of hard. But it's. He doesn't, it's not something he spams. I think he does it every, like, 30 seconds or 45 seconds, so it's not really, yeah. like, every 10 seconds, fucking, people are getting wasted. No, if the boss is hitting you and all four turrets are, turrets are hitting you at the same time, that actually does a lot of damage to you. But, I mean, if you're a tank, you know, obviously, you're, that's a good time to use a cool I, I really hope they step but, it up I mean, a nightmare with this. Like, it's... 
Yeah. Like, and maybe not the minefield needs to be changed that much. I think it's the boss at the end of the minefield that needs to be, that's, that's where they need to take a look at. Where it's like, okay, we really need to, this guy to actually to do something. Like I think well, one that thing they can change in the minefield is just you know have a little like have like a luck to where you know if you happen to get lucky uh, you can have two green mine spots right in front of each other so you can just go go right up two spots yeah, just some just some little random oh so add more RNG yeah no <laughs> yeah but see it's not RNG that would hurt you it'd be like one of these RNGs oh man this is awesome we can get through it just a little faster because this boss well they wouldn't sucks. add something nice on nightmare. No, it's gonna be harder. I, I think most likely what they're gonna do is they're probably gonna make that that um that timeline you need to get across the like I'll say it's gonna be lowered even more. So I mean you're gonna to be really on your game getting through the field. But then I'm hoping they actually just mostly just take a look at the boss himself and be like, Okay, this guy needs to actually do some stuff. That's actually pretty hard. Um Similar to like, because we actually kinda of left out of it when we we're talking about Toth and Zorn is that after you kill them, the other dude comes down. And um, oh, yeah. he doesn't really do anything because I always interrupt him. I I kind of like that they did that. Like, because how many times have, you know, through all our, our ratings and stuff like that, where it's like, you've barely killed the boss. You know what I mean? Where it's like maybe one or two people are up and the boss kind of just dies, you know, at the very end. And it's like, you know, it's like, that was not the cleanest kill in the world, mm -hmm. but whatever, it's a kill, I'll take it. Now, imagine if we did that afterwards, another dude came out. Oh, I mean. So, I mean... It's one of those things where it's like, oh, fuck. That's you know, what happened, like, and we only had, like, four people up, and I was the only healer. Yeah. He wasn't that hard. No, no, but, I mean, if you get in a bad situation, and it's easy on fights like that because, at the end, obviously, you're probably going to lose a tank or two. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Duxon because of it, yeah, yeah, because dealing with enrages and stuff like that, now having to deal with that guy without a tank up becomes a huge issue true so i mean stuff like that I, I i kind of like that they added at the end like it's kind of a weird random thing and it could be just enough to kind of screw you where it's like you beat you know the the two guys that are the majority of the fight but now here's this last part of the end i i, I kind of like that little twist they did at the end there for um because normal fights you don't ever can't see that kind of stuff so i i really like that um i kind of like see them play around with some more stuff kind of like that like obviously the minefield almost feels weird because it's almost like two different things where it's like the minefield is the puzzle boss and then you have the dude at the end who's just guarding the the chest <laughs> i mean that's pretty much all he's doing he's just guarding the chest so i mean the turrets i'm hopefully that the they, yeah really the turrets and 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 the guy just stands there and he's <laughs> like well I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat on you for a little bit until i fall have over. a bomb have a, have a bomb but um, I'm hoping they turn twist that around a lot at the at the end there. And you know what I, you know what I would have liked to seen. I would have liked to have to fight that guy the entire time through the minefield. No, no, oh, no, 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 no. that would be while while traversing the minefield. I I probably would <laughs> have given that like a nine out of ten then if it was something like that. That would have been really difficult. That would have because that would have been extremely like difficult. one thing that we didn't say about those like assassin droids you had to like find and like uninvis. You have to interrupt yeah. two things on them because like they do oh, a knockback yeah. which will knock you into mines, um, <laughs> and like they cleave and that's the only thing no, that no, no. hits tanks no, hard. It's, uh, no, no, it's no, the cleave you got right, but there's an overload where it's like an automatic explosion and it does so much damage. It, that's, oh, yeah, that, oh man, that it, was... it, you're pretty much, it's almost just like knocking you back into a mine. Um, it's, yeah, it's pretty, it's yeah. pretty fucking brutal. Um, like the cleave, like right now is doable, like to where it, you, it's not a big issue. I do see it being like one of these, you better interrupt this shit on Nightmare. And, um, so FYI, bring two people with less than eight second interrupts because you're going to be using them every time. No. Oh, grats, warriors. Good thing Donnie had job to do. But, um... Power text, dude. Oh, because they're already overpowered. Power text, dude, yeah. Bitch. But, um... <laughs> I... I do think that fight would have been awesome if you had to fight the boss while traversing the minefield. Like, that, that would have made that fight extremely difficult. I think they would have had to tone down the droid damage then. Yeah, obviously there's some give and take that had to go into that. But, um, obviously it had to take you a little bit longer to traverse the minefield. <laughs> 
But um, <laughs> yeah, that'd be rough. Yeah. Um, I I think that would have made that fight just I, I, that fight would actually have been really mem- like memorable. Then we will be like, okay, this is really fucking hard. Um, hopefully Bioware listens to this. I'm gonna email. I'm gonna email no this one to listens him. To us. Like, this this is what you need to do for Nightmare. <laughs> this is what it needs to be. FYI. And then, like, if they put do it, and like, everyone's complaining about it, oh, it's too fucking hard. You can I want the turret somewhere. to be the boss. <laughs> just a yes. giant turret comes. It would out. remind just you of like one. the first boss of Eternity Vault. <laughs> you know, the yeah. turrets on day one. <laughs> yeah, the it's nightmare like turrets. But um, moving on to kind of wrapping up this section. Obviously, we had Kephas at the end here, and um. Who is the last boss in the hard mode version? I'm still hoping for a fifth boss in normal, but hey, we're gonna take what we got. Um, me and Ducks and obviously had a lot more time in on this fight than uh, you guys did, but um, this is a very interesting fight. It, it it's a multi-phase fight for sure, where it's um basically you're dealing with this giant AT AT Walker thing who's just kind of just chilling there and different waves of droids or ads or vice versa whatever's going on between them and um this is is actually kind of an interesting fight where more of it seems to rely heavily on having enough yes. dps to make certain certain points in the fight like you, you need to be able to get this down fast enough before the next phase goes through and um more so than what it relies on healers or tanks, it really heavily lies on the DPS to make some of these numbers meet. And um, it makes for a pretty tough fight, honestly. Um, for Because, you know, we've definitely had our time doing Ugh, with Bombardier bastards. and other things. Because um, the way this fight works is it starts out with these three droids. And then the, the big AT-AT that it, you can't tank it or anything. It just kind of stands there in the middle and it blasts areas of the thing so pretty much it just kind of is there the entire time um after you kill the first uh three coming down the three that are out and initially uh a bombardier comes out the trick with the bombardiers is they're they're like a suicide bomber so what they that they do is you basically have to stun them and keep them stun locked down the entire time that you kill them so one of your players has the ability to hold on to the bomb or like they, they become the bomb, or whatever, and that means they have to run under the ATAT, which weakens it. Which you know, that's a running theme through a lot of raid stuff, where it's like you know, weaken the boss and now you can attack them. Um, this kind of happens between every phase, where it's like, okay, now there's a new wave of dudes come out, and after that is a bombardier, and then you eventually work it down to where you're able to kill the ATAT, and you also have. Kephas himself, who is the actual last boss, fighting at the same time. Now, Kephas is kind of interesting because this guy, he by far hits a tank harder than yes, any yes. boss. Yes, I, I don't think I've ever been hit that hard. Um, and these are just normal hits. These are not like, I. he does get a buff yeah. that his next hit will hit hard, but these are just normal like 5, 6k hits and it's like, oh shit. And like, I consider myself like my character to be extremely well geared tank. But th- this guy, it's, it's like, you know, each hit's mm-hmm. like, that's half your life is that hit so i mean it's um it's extreme at at this point in the fight which is towards the end of the fight it's extremely stressful on the healers who at this point throughout the entire fight have not really had too much of a break at all because there's constant aoe damage and random damage throughout the entire fight anyways so um i it, it makes for a pretty difficult fight for everyone to deal with i will say at the end it's pretty cool with the tanks because obviously you have to tart basically um basically taunt dancing between him between what your your two tanks to obviously try to reduce the damage that he's doing to a tank and obviously because he puts another debuff on that you know makes him drop this like little aoe stuff that the tank has on the ground so basically they gotta run around it and keep the raid out of it so i mean um kind of an interesting mechanic 
Um, I like the difficulty of the fight. Uh, I like the length of the fight. Which is, it's an end boss. I mean, it, it should be a lot longer than a thing. I was really disappointed with KP, when, uh, with, with Karaga. Karaga's not a final boss fight. That, that's, that, that's a joke. That's like, I'm just going to take him and kite him around the room like once and he's going to die. So, I mean... It was good to see them actually put what I would say qualifies as a a final raid boss. Like it, the difficulty's there, the length is there, and um, it, it actually does demand a little part from every single part of your raid. I know, like, this I don't know, what, is what, my kind what of fight. Of it, I love long fights when there's just so much shit going on, and and like you, like you were saying earlier, like you need like the DPS to be on the ball because they've got to get those. Those bombardiers are what pretty much make or break the fight you can't get the bombardiers you're pretty much going to be fucked um because i from my like you only get so many i think it may it might be like you get five or six bombardiers but if our dps is good which what we were seeing three yes it only um, take you three. That, and from what i yes yeah. from what i was seeing what we were doing we were three. on par with that but uh we also it just uh, what i'm noticing though a lot of these fights we need to do like we're having to figure out what we can do to maximize as much dps in terms of like we can't move the boss we have to position him here and then it's like um it's just it's a crazy fight and i and i really like it so i'm actually gonna get this granted we did on story mode and we're currently in the process of hard mode um i'm gonna have to give this an eight out of ten yeah i definitely i would give it an, an eight out of ten um the only kind of stuff that keeps this from like to me because rarely a fight ever is ever going to reach like a nine or a ten uh, i would probably only ever give very few fights like that kind of um rating in general like the only ones i can really think of on top of my head is maybe first time doing Velastraz. like was well that was an amazing fight um I also nothing in, in tour right now because it's not quite there yet. Um, other than that, I can maybe only think of one or two other fights in WoW that reach that level. I will say the uh, the end of Old War in general was like that kind of level of a fight. Um, so it, I'm very very pleased with what Gabe has done in his team as far as bringing up the level of what what the the operations are now and um it makes me really excited to see what they're going to do in nightmare now if they kind of cheese it and don't really you know if they just make you know, the other bosses just hit harder and have more hit points i will be extremely yeah. disappointed now if they go in and they start adding new mechanics to these fights and things like that which we, we didn't really mention but there are different mechanics between normal mode of uh, explosive conflict and hard mode explosive conflict so i mean it it'd be kind of cool if they even you know add another layer to that with the nightmare that really you know it makes it live up to its name where it's like you know these these are like nightmare versions of these fights like the, these this is that fight times like a, a thousand so i mean um if they do that i will be extremely pleased with what gabe and then the team there at tour have been doing with the uh, the in-game operations and i really do hope that they kind of continue yeah it's, it's definitely a big step up from ev to this and um yeah i yeah <laughs> I, i'm very very pleased with what he has done so far and uh with that we're gonna start wrapping it up so um so with you cloud you got any uh, uh final thoughts for us not really uh play diablo 3 <laughs> yes. Oh, Cloud. All right. All right, Blake, you got any final uh, thoughts? Play Diablo 3. <laughs> and perhaps there will be some awesome moments tomorrow when we dice Diablo 2. Yeah. Oh. Can't wait. I am so excited for no reason. You you see, I know. It's like, it's been out for over a decade, yeah. man. It's, it's okay. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, right, uh, thank you Gabe for uh, you upping got. the challenge if you happen to listen and um, yeah I, I'm very very happy right now with with the rating content compared to last tier bullshit but um, yeah uh, if you need to email me at uh, duxonng 
at gmail.com. Uh, follow me on Twitter at ngduxon. And um, yeah, that's about it. And that does it for us here at Nothing But Tour. Maybe you can catch up with us by logging on to www.nothinggaming.com. Email us your questions about the show at nothinggaming at nothinggaming.com. Follow us on Twitter at Nothing Gaming. Download episodes of your favorite show on iTunes or listen to the latest episodes from 7 to 8 p.m. Central Standard Time on Bootleg Radio Station. Thank you for listening. Good night.